A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. I've just come back from Iceland and in this video I tell you all about what I took in my travel bag, what I took with me on the plane and what I put in the hold. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I've just got back from an amazing workshop in Iceland. We had stunning conditions there. We were so lucky, we had a little bit of cloud, a little bit of snow, had some blue skies. The sunset and sunrises that we had were out of this world and we did a lot of different types of photography. So more of that next week. Um, but I thought it'd be a really good idea to go through what I took with me on my trip. What I actually took on the um, carry-on luggage with me which is this bag here and my laptop bag and also what I put in the hold as well because it's a question I get asked quite a lot when I go on trips you know how, how do you pack for your trip so I'll go through my gear and um, it's a good chance also to talk to you a little bit more about the the gear that I've got because I've changed quite a lot of it recently and I'm in the process of going through lens changes as well so I can talk a little bit about that as well so I've got this Temba 32 litre bag which is slightly too big to go on the, 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 the carry-on, but I've always got away with it. So you've got to be a little bit careful because they might refuse it, but I've always um, managed to get it on. And to be honest, people go on with much bigger bags as well. So if we have a look inside, um, so these are all the things that I think are really essential to take with me on the plane that I don't really want to put in, in the whole luggage. So I've got two, two cameras. So let's just have a look at them. First one, which is my Nikon Z7. Now the great thing with this bag is that you can put these mirrorless cameras in this way around, so lens down with a with a 24 to 70 lens on, which is really fantastic. So I've got my 24 to 70 on on this, my Z7, um, and it's got my L bracket on here as well, which is purposely made for this camera. If you, if you haven't got an L bracket, um, then then make sure you get one. I should also say that all this gear as well, I've updated the page on my website, and I'll talk to you about that um, later but you can find links um, to where I got all this gear from as well. Okay, so that's my Nikon Z7, which is my main stills camera. I also shoot some video with it, but mainly I'm shooting with this camera, my stills, because obviously it's got the highest resolution, the best dynamic range, um, and it's just all, all out the best stills camera. Now, I do shoot some video on, like this video here, where I'm in front of the camera and talking about the composition that I've got, but mostly I'm shooting on the Fuji X-T3, which is, which is a better film camera. Okay, so that's the 24 to 70 lens on there. I've also got this um, 16 to 35 millimeter lens, which is, um, I've had this for quite a few years. It's seen a lot of action and it's probably broken in a few places as well. I shouldn't say that if I'm ever gonna sell it, but, um, yeah, that's got a lens adapter on for my Z camera. And I'm actually going to get the wide angle lens that's just been announced by Nikon as well, um, the F4 wide angle, because it's smaller and sharper than this. Okay, the other Nikon lens that I've got, or one a lens for my Nikon camera, is my Sigma 24mm lens. And this is a 1.4 lens. So I took this specifically to shoot... Um, to, to use for Astro um, because it's obviously great at capturing light. Now I haven't shot Astro with it before but I also shoot landscapes with it where I'm trying to get out of focus foreground and trying to um, use it to get out of focus foreground so um, yeah I, as it happens I didn't use it a huge amount so I probably could have done without it but it is a fantastic lens um, 24mm f1.4 it's a stunningly good lens for video as well because it, it just creates really great sort of out of focus bokeh in the background. So that was my Nikon gear. Um, so you've noticed that I've not got a long lens, so I'll speak a little bit more about that in a minute. So then, so then if we just move on to my Fuji, I've got my Fuji X-T3. Um, you can see I've got these uh, little tabs on, on my camera as well, which is peak design strap, which I talked about in a previous video, which just allows me to um, connect a strap should I need it um, and I leave those on all the time. 
So this at the moment's got the 10 to 24 lens on, which is my main video in lens when I'm just hand holding and, and looking into the camera, sort of vlog style. So that's my X-T3, which is predominantly for video because it's a better video camera than my Z7. And then I've also for that got two, I've got another lens down here. So that really small, um, 35 millimeter f2 lens which is again a great lens to put on if I just want to get some good b-roll because it allows me to get some stuff that's really out of focus so I use this for b-roll a little bit on my Fuji again I took that I hardly used it but you know I, I, I do like it and then I took the 50 to 140 lens so this is a super Fuji lens it's so so sharp and I knew that I was going to be doing more probably video with a long lens than I was still, so I decided to take this rather than my rather than my seventy to two hundred Nikon lens. Um, as it happened, I actually used it for quite a lot of stills as well. But what I find is that when I'm using this for stills, I I tend to create quite a lot of um, panos. So where I'll shoot three across and then two down, so a three by two pano to create a really high resolution image. So even if I'm shooting this on my Fuji X-T3, then it, all, all, it, it still allows me to produce something that's really high quality. So that's my cameras and lenses, six lenses, two cameras. And because I'm mirrorless, then you know it, it's easy to fit that in, in, in the bag and, and quite a lot of other stuff. So the next thing is my drone. So I've got my drone controller. Um, I've also got the DJI, if I can get it out. The DJI, oh, the DJI. Mavic 2 Pro, which is a stunning drone. The quality improvement of, of, of this over the previous drone is, is really, really impressive. I can take really good stills with this. I did some fantastic panoramic shots with it when I was in Iceland as well, and some really, really good video footage, which um, I'll, pro I'll probably put at the beginning of this, this sequence, so you've probably seen it already. So that's my drone, and I take that with me on the plane because obviously I don't want to get it damaged or I don't want to lose it. Then for my drone I've got some filters as well which are the Cinema Series, Polar Pro Cinema Series which are just stunning filters. I find um, that even though you can change the aperture on the Mavic 2 Pro you still when it's really bright need filters to reduce it down to one over double the shutter speed. So there are my filters and I've also got filters for my Cameras, work, cameras as well. So I've got some Polar Pro screw-on filters. So these are filters that I just screw onto my lenses. Um, they're just ND filters. Uh, I think there's an ND3 and an ND6. So again, when I want to reduce the exposure for video, purely used for video those. Um, although I actually did do some stills with them. They're really good quality, no color cast. So they're my Polar Pro filters. I've then got... Um, a set of filters which are in here and I still use this Lee carry case because I just really like it so in here I've got filters now I've stopped using graduated filters well I say I've stopped using them I don't use them so much so in here I still have got some soft edge graduated filters um, but predominantly I am using these filters which are just um, just this is a three stop ND filter, the Firecrest Ultra um, filter, which is again, a really good filter, no color cast. So I use that if I want to slow down the exposure, which I did quite a bit at the beach. Um, and then I've also got a polarizing filter and I still have to say that I use my Lee one just because it fits on my Lee holder and I've decided to go back to the Lee holder and to put my format high tech filters, which are really good in my Lee holder. It's not that I don't really like the format high tech holder. It's just that just for my workflow, it just seems to work a little bit better. So I've got this, circular polarizing filter. Again, this and the three stop ending filter are sort of essential filters really. Um, you can't really do those things post in, in Lightroom. So I've got my set of filters, adapters for my lenses um, to fit different size lenses. So that takes up quite a lot of room, unfortunately. And I, I actually almost put that in my hold luggage. Well, there we go. So then we get onto sound. So I've got a, a little um, microphone, which is a Movo microphone that goes on top of my camera. 
This isn't super, super amazing quality, but it's good enough quality when I have to use it. Really, I'm taking all my audio with a lav mic, and this is just backup, just in case it doesn't work, and it also helps me to sync my lav mic audio. So that goes on top of my camera, and then I've got this, which is a Zoom recorder, H1 recorder. I've had this for two years, I think, and it's still going strong. Um, I might update it because I, the battery doesn't last long in it, and it's just a bit of a pain, really. But it re re produces really good quality audio. So with that, I have my lav mic. So my lav mic with the fluffy squirrels to stop the wind noise, and I just clip that on, and I leave it on all day that I'm recording. So that goes into my Zoom recorder there. And I also have in here a spare lav mic as well, because I can't afford that to go wrong, and I have had one break in the past. So this is a spare lav mic. I've also got the wire here for my other mic. And then in here, I've also got a level. So should I need it, and I want to use, use a level, um, to level my tripod or something, then I can just stick that on my tripod. My, tri my big tripod has a level on it, my smaller travel tripod doesn't have a, a level on it, so I always take that level, it's always useful, always use it on every trip. Got a battery here for my drone, and I've got a um, Peli card case holder to hold all my SD cards, and, I, and in terms of SD cards, I always take enough memory to not have to delete an SD card when I'm out doing a shoot. So, you know, I might take 10, 64 gigabyte SD cards and, um, you know, that's that's really important because I want to be able to, when I back that up, not have to delete these so I have a backup of the backup. So that's my Peli card holder. I'm running out of room, put it there. I think that is it in here. So then in this top pocket here, 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 I've got my batteries. Um, so these are all my charge batteries and when something um, is complete and uncharged, I put it in here because I always could never remember what was charged and what was uncharged. So if it's in that top pocket, it's charged. If it's in the bottom one, it's not charged. So I've just got a, a range of batteries, Fuji batteries, batteries for my um, Zoom One, etc. And then in these, I've got my head torch, which is ridiculously strong. Boom. Um, so that's good for when I'm going out and doing some astro stuff. And then in this pocket here, I've got some lens wipes. And I also have, and which I didn't have in the bag at the time, this cloth, which I use to wipe my cloth and dry it off if it gets wet, like near waterfalls, etc. And I've got about five of these that I put in my whole luggage, but I always take one in my carry-on as well. And that's it, so next thing is tripod. Let me find the tripod. Tripod. Okay, so, so I have, also have this tripod, but I don't take that on my carry-on. I put that in my hold luggage. So probably a good time now to explain to you all the other things I put on my hold luggage um, that are photography related. So let's just get all this and stick it back in the bag then. So let's put that down there and... I just like it when there's just something that just fits really well. There we go. Okay, so let's just move this out of the way. And that's heavy. So, and, and then I'll bring on all the things that I've got in my hold luggage. There we are. So that's better. So I've got, um, these, these are the camera related things that I put in my hold luggage. So it wouldn't be great if I lost some of these things, but it probably wouldn't be the end of the world. I could probably find some of the, the things where, where I'm going. Charges may be a bit tricky, but I, I think I'd probably get away with something. So the first thing is a bag. So I've got a, a, another bag. So I put that in there purely because then I can split, put these things in bags that I then put into my car when I'm going somewhere. So I might put my drone in here to give me more room and my other bag to put some of these things. So that's one thing, it's a smaller bag. Then I've got a set of charges here. So this is charges for everything, um, which is fairly obvious. I've then got this tripod, which I actually should have taken two. I usually, when I'm doing videos, 
have two tripods. I have this one, which is the Travel Angel um, FTA 28C, which is a really light carbon fiber tripod, but it's not too light. You know, I can still shoot fairly fairly well well in it. Um, so I usually take this when I'm going on sort of foreign travels, but I should have taken two tripods because it, it's it's useful to have another tripod when when you're doing video to set things up. And I actually only had this. So anyway, I put those in my haul luggage. Um, then really top tip is take something like this, which is just a multi-socket extension in the country where you've got all the plugs. So you can just have one adapter, plug it into the wall and plug all the other things in that. I always take that wherever I go. Um, I'll get onto these things in, in a second, but first of all, these random things that look like, I don't know what they're like, I won't go into that, but they're, they're, they're basically um, crampons that fit on sturdy walking shoes. So you don't need um, special shoes to put these on. Now, they're not great for walking a long way in, but if you're just walking across some ice near a waterfall or something like that, then they are then they are fantastic. Um, they just came into the, their own on, on this trip. I used them um, a number of times and they were stopped me from falling over, basically. So they were good, and I put those in my whole luggage. And then I've got all my cleaning equipment, which I think is really important. So in here, I've got my anti-static filter cleaner, which, which as you've got filters, you're gonna be cleaning them a lot. I've got a brush to brush things when I've been on the beaches, a blower, um, some more lens wipes, some alcohol for cleaning as well, which I think is really important because you wanna get all the the grease off your lens so that when you're using the orange um, thing when you're in the field it's just getting that moisture but not smearing grease on your lens so I clean my lenses every night that I've shot and then that goes in one of these cases so that's just really really handy and then the final thing is this which is a sensor cleaning brush this is amazing so if you've got a mirrorless camera then you probably find you've got more dirt on your sensor um, Certainly with the with the Z7, it's probably the worst camera I've ever had for dust. Um, but it's not a problem if you have one of these sensor brushes. It's a really clean nylon brush, and basically you just blow air on it, which creates static, and then that picks up the dust, and you just rub it over your sensor. So, so far, I've only had to do um, a sensor swab clean on my sensor once, and I've done this about 20 times, and it just gets rid of the dust really well. And I think if I keep on top of this, then I'll probably not have to clean it with the liquid too often. So that is fantastic, because you want to get rid of the, the dust if you can, because obviously you don't want to then waste that time having to do it in Lightroom afterwards. And that's it. That's all the stuff that I take with me on a, on a trip. I hope that's been useful. I always like it when somebody else shows me what they've got in their camera bag, it gives me some tips. I like to see what sort of lenses they're, they're using and what things they've got in there. Mine's fairly simple and fairly minimalist. I try not to take too many accessories because I want to get as much camera gear and lenses in as, as I can. So this week's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. So thanks a lot to Squarespace for, for sponsoring it. Without them, I, I couldn't make these videos. You know, they are very time consuming and it's a brilliant to have Squarespace alongside this channel. Now, if you are looking to do a website, it's so easy to use Squarespace. I know I've said this multiple times before, but um, you, know, you don't need any technical knowledge. You don't need to understand any coding or anything like that. You can just go and it's just a little bit like using a word processor and it sorts out all your images, etc. So I've added a new page on my website with Squarespace that's got all the details of all this gear that I use with links to Amazon or wherever else that I might have bought them. So take a look at it. I've also in there also included the clothing that I use on this trip as well, because a lot of people ask about that. I was gonna do a video about it, but I, I don't know, I think that might've been a little bit boring. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should do a clothing video and, and maybe I'll do one in the future. But go and take a, take a look at it. And if you're interested in getting your own website, then you can go to squarespace.com and if you want 10% off your website or domain, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Nigel and hopefully that'll help you out. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. And until next Sunday, when you're gonna see something like what's gonna follow in a minute, bye. This is a waterfall inside a cylinder of ice. It's incredible.